Franklin admonish me for refusing to ride in the White House limo or to be protected by Secret Service? Well, I feel Americans are wonderful. I cannot imagine being afraid of going among them, as I always have, as I always shall. During our Inauguration Day festivities, the Secret Service received a warning letter describing a supposed plot by which a bomb was to be thrown from the roof of a house overlooking our automobile route. During our ride, there was an unaccountable halt in the procession, and suddenly, pump, something fell in my lap, the, the bomb I thought. Well, happily, only a clump of flowers had been thrown from a window. <laughs> I had a similar experience with the Secret Service. We were celebrating, having another backyard barbecue. <laughs> I leaned over the grill, and suddenly I felt a sharp, stinging, burning sensation in my rump. <laughs> my derriere. <laughs> Shirley Temple had shot me in the backside with her slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> I was holding his hand. Par pardon me? I was holding Mr. Lincoln's hand. We were sitting very close to one another in the theater. The Ford Theater? There was another couple in the box with us at the time. Oh, I forget their names now. Major Henry Rathbone and Miss Clara Harris. I whispered to Mr. Lincoln. What would Miss Harris think of me hanging on to you, sir? I smiled and said, she wouldn't think anything about it. It was nearly 10.15 in the evening hour. The play was Our American Cousin. I was still holding his hand when I was startled by the blast, the explosion of the revolver. Stench of gunpowder, splatter of blood and bone. The bullet it pierced my husband's brain. The gunman John Wilkes Booth shot the president, stabbed Mr. Rathbone, then leaped to the stage below. He was captured several days later, and doctors attempted to resuscitate the president. I began to cry. I was still holding his hand and I was begging the doctors, please help him, save my husband. Could he be covered? My husband, my dear husband, was he dead? The president's condition was critical. It was decided to move him across the street to the Peterson house. <laughs> Why didn't he kill me? Why was I not the one? I held him and I kissed him all through the night. By dawn, Mr. Lincoln's condition had worsened. His breathing was irregular, halting. I begged him, I said, Father, please, please listen one more moment. Just speak to me. Just speak to our children. The doctors pulled me from his deathbed, and I begged him, please, just please bring me a lock of his hair. Oh, my God. I knew I had given my husband to die. At 7.22 a.m., April 15, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States, was dead. <laughs> <laughs>